Dudes to Dads, brought to you by Dad University, is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads. Wow. (laughs) It never gets old. Well, it's just funny. So before we turned the mics on, we were um, having some technical difficulties. We're like, you know, it's episode 194. You would think that we would have this sound thing. We don't have it down. down. You learn it. We're like testing it. Like, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, no. It's we don't have a funny. studio. It's, 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 a, it's a studio, but not quite a studio. It's so a remote studio. It's a remote studio. But we no, have to it, is, it, it was just sort of funny, so I was trying not to laugh, <laughs> but hey, um, you know. And here we fun. are. <laughs> so, uh, how are you, Alan? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. That was yeah. pretty funny. A little late recording tonight. It is. Yeah, we both were really busy, and I, I especially had a weird, like, a little, you know, putting out fires craziness yeah but everything's good oh you mean we we live lives yeah. as well this we is not what we do full we time do. yeah if i wish i could just sit there and talk <laughs> Dude, <laughs> although be, my, then my voice would be really bad no but if you just did it like you know a few times a day and be, yeah you do uh, that anyway i know as a That's consultant true. so well tonight's episode important skills that every new dad should know okay you know when when you find out that you're going to be a father, I'm sure everybody's just like, yeah, I got this. Like, no problem. I totally know what I'm doing. Right. You know, I know everything there is to know about being a dad. That's, of course, why they're listening to this podcast. Yeah, exactly. And you went through that exact phase. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, dealing with a baby, you know, a wife, work, family, it's it's easy. It's, it's like I got it all handled. No problem. That's why I'm on What's episode 194 and right. still trying to figure this stuff out <laughs> 10 years later. Um. The reality, let's have it kick in, is that, you know, being a dad is awesome. No mm-hmm. question. Um, but you're trying to figure out everything that you need to know. When you're a new dad, it's like everything's new. You're experiencing all of these new feelings, all these new things. And so I wanted to dedicate this episode into some important skills that I think every new dad should master. Mm-hmm. Well, I shouldn't say should. I don't want to should all over somebody. Right. I, I think they're episode. important. Yeah. I think other people will think they're important too. Right. Um, I think a lot of dads, at least when I, you know, I get notes or comments and emails and such, they are really focused on sort of tactical things like, you know, changing a baby's diaper, sure. Action uh, items, how so. to hold a baby, yeah, yeah. you know, how to feed the baby, like very, very specific things things right. um and yeah those are skills but i'm i'm really talking about broader things okay. you know things that'll affect you emotionally or physically or such um you know having a great wiping technique is really important <laughs> i'm sure or if you hold your baby in that wonderful special position um wiping technique. but i can tell you from experience that stuff really doesn't matter <laughs> well, in the grand scheme of things yeah. yeah it only lasts for a little bit of a yeah bit. i mean then you gotta move on just when you learn to wipe you know that you don't need to wipe you know, them. Exactly. they wipe themselves i was thinking that um so yeah it, it these are things that are really going to impact your life and your child's life. So right. let's talk about the first one. First mm-hmm. one here, managing expectations. Mm-hmm. So we all have, I think, scenarios and things that are head when we are have going to have a baby and you have these expectations of like how your child should be what they should do or how, you know, you should feel that whole thing about shooting, like you end up shooting all over yourself, you know, and everybody else. Mm-hmm. I mean, even you might even think how your wife or your you know baby's mom should act as well. Sure. And so one of those things is managing all of those expectations. And so not only for you, but for those around you and ideally it's really best to not have expectations right because when you don't have expectations you won't be disappointed sure i guess that's the best way of saying yeah yeah (laughs) it's a very zen yeah buddhist way to think of it yeah it's very hard i mean when you set yourself up with certain expectations about this is how it's supposed to be you're often disappointed or i mean the the reason we are disappointed is because our reality does not meet our expectations correct yeah and that's disappointment i find that for a lot of things no 
Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's with you know, relationships, professional life, yep. all those kinds of things. Yeah, for sure. So when you can somehow, I don't know if you can tell me how, you can go into it without expectations, um, but you just try to reduce them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not saying like have lower expectations. It means try to have no expectations and just be open to whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. So whether it's good, bad, this, that, you know, just, just be open to it. So that's an important one that I felt, at least for me, because I had all these expectations of how the pregnancy was supposed to be, how the birth was supposed to be, what's going to happen after the birth, how I would bond with the baby, like all these things. And it doesn't all come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And then you end up getting stressed out. And, right. Yeah, you know, for no reason. Overeating. And, yeah. <laughs> drinking. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Went off on a tangent. Went on, yeah. Drag car yeah. races or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> Buy a sports car. <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, okay. So number two, patience. Um, if you guys haven't learned already, being a new parent requires patience. You know, everything you do, as an example, like takes longer when you have a baby. Right. It just... You know, but so if you're somebody who, you know, likes to be on time or, you know, thinks that you can do so many things in a given amount of a given amount of time, you're going to have to give yourself a little bit more cushion. Right. You know, if you're already a person who's late, you're going to be more late. And so get ready for that. And your patience will be tested. So mm -hmm. even if you are a patient person, yeah. you know, a baby crying for like an extended period of time. Whew, yeah. Not a lot that uh not a lot of people can can stand that. well i'm gonna say i am a patient person and i that's one of the things i fear is like i'm just gonna run out of patience with it I'm like okay oh, <laughs> you will what are you crying about like, like <laughs> what the heck is going on here no you, know? you will um you know I, another funny one is you know you'll change a baby's diaper and then right as you've changed it they do it they all. go it again like, there we go yeah it's like ah oh, that's wonderful Thanks. right and so you're like i just <laughs> finished changing the diaper <laughs> You know, um, but I mean, for some for some people like those kinds of specific things won't, you know, cause them to lose their patience, mm -hmm. but something else will. Yeah. You yeah. know, I guarantee it. I mean, yeah. I'll put a stamp on it. Sure. It's, it's going to. So you just just realize that your patience will be tested no matter what you might, you know, think or however you might think that you're, uh, you know, safeguarded against that. Right. Uh, number three, gratitude. Um, it is impossible to feel down and depressed if you're feeling grateful. And so, you know, we've, we've done some previous stuff, obviously about gratitude and, and I explain how the secret of, you know, the secret to happiness is being grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually have a video on that called the secret to happiness. And it's really about being grateful and how, you know, you can practice gratitude as a new dad. And I, I just think it's a really, really good thing to do. And it's, and it's like any muscle. It doesn't happen overnight. Like right. you have to practice. That's why it's called practice gratitude. <laughs> um, it's writing things down. You know, there's, there's tons of reasons when you are a new dad to be grateful. And, it's just you have to you have to develop that gratitude muscle, and it's like going to the gym. You don't go there one day and go, "Oh, I'm totally ripped." Totally ripped. Yeah, I mean, I'm done. I'm in good shape. No, I mean, it's something that takes time, and you have to you have to do it. So, yeah, gratitude is kind of that same way. I mean, you can feel, you know, you might feel it right away, but to get really good at it, it's something that you practice. You have to write things down. You've got to remind yourself, you know, at least for some. I mean. For me, at least. Well, no, and I think for everybody on some level, I think that that term count your blessings is really applicable here because yeah. it's like, you know, you do have to kind of go, hey, what do I have versus what I don't have? Absolutely. You know what I mean, instead of saying, what, what don't I have? I need to get those things. It's more like going, well, what do I have? Actually, this mm -hmm. is good things that we have that, that I should just be appreciative of. And right. then they'll make you appreciate, you know, your, your, everything going forward. So absolutely. Yeah. Uh, fourth skill, be present. So a lot of people talk about being present, but what does that actually mean as a new father? You know, to me, there, there's two things. Um, one is not being distracted while I'm trying to experience experience something with my child. Mm -hmm. So this could be just like, you know, putting my phone away when I'm engaging with the child, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we know that's a pain point of yours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but it's yeah. Like several just, episodes I'd say that. Of course. Yeah. Uh, not saying not, I would. Not that you would do that. it. I'm saying that yeah. you have a pain with some of them else doing that. Correct. Distracted by 
technology Absolutely. or whatever. You know. And then the second part of being present is to notice things while they are happening. So, you know, I'll just give you an example. So if you're sitting down holding your child, you know, and you're noticing like their face or you notice the surroundings that you are in, mm-hmm. you know, it's really looking at colors. It's really looking at, you know, them, the sounds that you hear, you know, it's the idea of not being on autopilot mm-hmm. and that is what being present is. And, yeah. and, and it can be little things, um, you know, something I used for myself, I, I, I forgot where I got the term, but I, I just used the term mental snapshot. Mm-mm. And I remember because I've done a couple of these in my lifetime and I, I remembered that I was at like one of them was I was at a rock concert and I was like, I want to remember this moment for the rest of my life. Like <laughs> I was having such a good time. I was with yeah. some friends and I just it, I was so present, like so. And I remember just staring and saying to myself, I am taking a mental snapshot of this and I have never forgot it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I remember the crowd. I remember the music. I remember my friends. Yeah. And it's like, I, I took that second to just be like, I just want to remember this and soak this in, mm-hmm. you know, they weren't allowed cameras. So, yeah. um, you know, so, right. um, at so that time, put it on Instagram. Yeah. We, we weren't allowed cameras <laughs> back in the day. So that was something I just, you know, that, that was a moment where I was able to be present. And, yeah. and I think what happens is when, you know, you have a child, that is sometimes really hard because you are putting out fires or you always feel like you're going from one place to the next or you're tired or, you know, there's all these different scenarios. And so uh, for me, it was hard often to be present because even when I was, you know, with my child, I was worried about something that was happening at work. Or if I, you know, was at work, I'm worried about something that's happening with my child, (laughs) you know, whatever it was. Um, So that was something I think that I, you know, learned a little bit more how to master Mm -hmm. um, was, you know, that act of being present. So uh, number five, unconditional love. So as a parent, we are often in situations which involve conditional love. And, you know, you just simply, I mean, it's simple. You don't want that. Um, What do you mean? So, Unconditional love is loving your child regardless of what they do, how they act, what they achieve, Mm -hmm. or who they become. Right. So you're not ultra excited because your child did X, Y, Z per se. It's you're loving your child because they are your child. Sure. And that's, yeah. that's really the only reason. So like they roll over or they crawl and like all of a sudden you're, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you can get excited. I'm not saying you can't get excited, but like we have a tendency to the way that we act is more loving and more positive when our kids are doing things positively mm-hmm. and that's conditional. Sure. You know, I mean, we're all guilty of it. I'm not saying yeah, we're all right. You right. Know, hey, yeah, don't be, you know, you know but like affirmation. And all but that. the idea is, I mean, a lot of the power in parenting comes in those times when they're not acting the way that you want. Yeah, you're they're not what you thought they were, you know, or you wanted them to be. Mm-hmm. And so when I've been in those situations with my children where. You know, the situation is typically like, like, oh, they did something. I should be upset. And they're often surprised when I don't get upset, (laughs) you know, and then saying, oh, and I'm saying, well, you know, what's the point? Like, I love you no matter what. Like, you know, it's okay that you did that or it's okay that this happened. Like, I don't care. Yeah, it has to be perfect. Like, oh, you didn't get a perfect grade. Like, I don't care. (laughs) You know, your grades are for you. That's not for me. Right. You know, and those kinds of things of being conditional. So you just want to be aware that unconditional love is so powerful. And that was something that of mastering that skill of just loving your child no matter what. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they don't need to achieve something or be a certain thing in order for you to love them. Conversely, they don't need to like walk all over you and just do whatever the heck they want like you have to have guidance but you love them regardless yeah no i mean yeah it's positive or negative yeah i mean it it, but it also too if they do something that's really negative yeah you still love them right you know it's not yeah i I don't know yeah you can't uh it it works both ways yeah for sure yeah yeah. um 
Uh, yeah, I just I think that every child just you know every child deserves to be loved unconditionally, mm-hmm. and when you can master that, your relationship with them is going to be better. Right. That's just how it is. Yeah. Um, and then finally, the E word. Number six, empathy. <laughs> Love this one. I want to say that that was the most commonly said phrase besides dudes to dads and Jason Cradman, Alan Bush. Empathy would be right after that. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And uh, it is the granddaddy of all new father skills. To me, it is the single most important thing to learn as a new dad. Let me repeat that. Learning to be empathetic is the single most important thing as a new dad. Yeah. Um, I think that's the most important thing as a human being, regardless if you're a new dad, I, mm-hmm. I just, it has become such a powerful thing when you can become empathetic. And I now notice when other people are being empathetic, it's amazing how that affects me and affects the people around me. And I, and I, when I witness it, um, I was having a conversation with someone the other day and I was telling him about a situation that was not that great that I was in. And, um, they simply said like, wow, that must be really hard. And I was like, yeah, it is. <laughs> and like, I immediately felt connected to them. They didn't try to say, oh, it'll be okay. Oh, but yeah, like, yeah. they really just understood exactly what I was doing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all they had to say. And it's all that sometimes you need. Yeah. Because a lot of times you might have all the answers in your head, but when someone sits there and goes, you don't need to answer. You don't need answers. You just yeah. need someone to go. I too agree that that's really tough. Yeah. And, and I'll be there with you just to talk about that fact of this yeah. stuff. So, you know, for those that are not aware, just if you've listening to us for the first time, if you've listened to 194 <laughs> episodes, you'd probably hear a hundred keyword and empathy on 120 the of them talk about empathy. <laughs> Um, but it's able, it's being able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Mm -hmm. So seeing things from somebody else's perspective, you know, imagine seeing a situation from a newborn's perspective, that'll totally change the way that you handle things. Yeah. You know, it's just, everything's new. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my shoes? You know, like a small kid. I I always like love when I see little kids and babies because they have that. They don't care. They were looking at you wide eyed and staring at you like I never seen a facial hair or or long hair on a man or whatever it is, you know, and then they're looking at you like and and they wave and then they kind of like smile or whatever. And it makes me laugh because like everything is new to you. Every single experience you're looking around like what is going on right now? (laughs) Matt, that would be cool as an adult. Everything's (laughs) new. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, But you know what? All six of these skills are important. I mean, you know, yes, we're talking about for new dads, but they're important in any situation. Sure. Um, you know, when you're a new father, you're sort of in this, the middle of the chaos sometimes. And, and it's hard, it's hard to keep perspective, you know, on what's really important. And, and, and we often get lost in some of the small details and the daily grind of our lives. And so, you know, you might just be trying to get some sleep, (laughs) you know, let alone trying to master these skills. So, um, I think if you can, if you can master these skills, Hey, Actually, you don't even need to master them. Just practice them. <laughs> just, you don't even That's need to a be a revelation. Jedi. Yeah, don't have to be a Jedi. You don't just, even need to be a Jedi. Just try them. Just try them. Try practice them. Out, them. Try practice a little bit. You know, yeah. start with the, you know, the yellow white belt or whatever you call it in the karate. Totally. It's white belt. You know, like yeah. just start there. Yeah. If you do you, your child, and then even those around you are going to be much better off. So, <laughs> um, but we'd love to hear from you. And um, what skill do you think other new dads need to know for those dads who have been through fatherhood. What is a skill that you think is really important? Yeah. And Alan, if they do have something, what should they do? They should email us podcast at dudes, the dads.com or maybe hit us up on social media. Dudes, the dads at Twitter uh, or add dudes, the dads on Twitter, Facebook, Deuce to dads calm and then go to YouTube and watch some videos from Jason on dad university. It'd be really great to help hit us up there. Even if you want to talk just about Deuce to dads or some advice you have. And then if nothing else, at very least go to the place that you heard us or didn't hear us and you want to go find something else and leave a comment on iTunes, Apple podcasts, Stitcher. Uh, I'm never going to stop saying iTunes. <laughs> I realize that um, Stitcher and anywhere else you're hearing us right now, please go to that. Subscribe to that channel. Leave a like five stars, thumbs up and a comment. If you can uh, just really helps perpetuate the show and share it with your friends, share for it with other, your friends. for other men that you think might enjoy it or having children or going to have children or thinking about children or able to have children. 
I think they would enjoy it too. I, I would be curious the percentage of new dads versus percentage of dads that have children like Jason's kids' age. Yeah. If you listen to the show, or, or you know, what range are you in? So it would be cool to you know hear where you're coming from. I have an age five of uh, such and such gender, or I have an age twelve of such and such gender, and or I'm a brand new dad. I don't even know right. what, what gender it's going to be. So yeah, let us know. It would be really good to hear that. Cool. Well, Alan, as always, thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next week. See you next week.